a little bit of a different vlog today. Yeah, um, we had we had one that we were going to plan about 3D printing, and I started thinking about a, a walk I have with my mom. Um, she's 88, and I visited her in Los Angeles uh, a couple months ago, and she reminded me of a, a parent-teacher conference in eighth grade. And she said. Uh... Let's see, you weren't going to make it in the academic field, but you were very, very creative. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I don't understand that world. <laughs> and I remember filling in high school. Every time a report card came, you know, I just, I dreaded it. It would come in the mail. And of course, I would get it. Sometimes I hid it, but eventually they would find out. And it always said the same thing. D's, F's, and... What's the word? What was the word I told you that I lack? Um, I don't apply myself. That's right, I don't apply myself. Um, but to me, I was just bored. So you flash forward to uh, sort of, I'm trying to think of the first parent-teacher conference where um, Sharon and I are sitting across from the teacher and they're talking about Taylor. And they're like, gee, you know, if he would just ap apply himself, he just seems distracted. And it's like, well, it's funny, you know, at home, if you had something you were interested in, you could sit there and you were focused for hours. From your point of view, how was, how was high school? I mean, even before high school, I remember never being told why. I remember them testing me for things like dyslexia and ADHD, but I don't think anyone ever explained that there was anything normal about it. It was all just, you know, there's something wrong with you. Um, and that caused a lot of confusion um, and a lot of self-doubt and, and things like that. Just, you know, um, when, when every, when you don't, when you don't learn the way that every teacher in your high school wants to teach you, they just tell you that you're a failure. You're, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. It could have been the only classes I ever got an A in were English and art. And I don't even think I managed to get that every time. <laughs> so. You failed TV production. I did. <laughs> now, to be fair, I learned very quickly that our TV production class was sort of, um, uh, TV movie appreciation class where you had to write reports. Yeah, it, it was almost as if they're trying to teach us how to be a movie critic instead of a, a filmmaker because we never actually made anything. Hey, hey, what's happening? What are you doing? Good. But, 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 but my point is when I was thinking about the 3D printing thing was so. In fact, in high school, you didn't do very good in math. Nope. I think you had to take algebra twice. <laughs> yeah. But math wasn't your thing. And uh, then you jumped forward and you said you wanted a 3D printer when we were making films. And you talked about, oh, I can make I can make props. Now, I didn't have any idea how 3D printers work. But the first one I remember was we needed a, a device thing for this movie we were doing called My Alien Girlfriend. And I just wanted something that would look like all right, maybe it's a little transporter thing, like a, to get her back to the ship. And Taylor goes away, and he designs this thing that rotates, that opens, that has LEDs inside. And I was blown away because everything about it had to do with math. And, yeah. and you dove into a program that, a software program that you had never used before. I, re I realized very quickly that almost everything about 3D modeling has to do with math. <laughs> and, uh, but I didn't mind because I wanted to learn how to do it. And it was interesting and it was, uh, it was creative and necessary. And I literally, like anytime I 3D model something, I have to do a bunch of math. You know, e even sometimes something simple like converting um, metric to uh, imperial measuring measurement systems yeah. like it's you have to do like you have to do math 
but it's not it's not work. But what, what do you think of the disconnect from high school math to to the three D program and you getting it and, and just and understanding it because it's obvious you get it. I think it's just interest. I think uh, one thing no teacher ever gave me was um, an actual desire to learn. And, you know, I had to find that for myself. So I've heard, I've heard it explained, like, from other people with ADHD that, like, having to do a task that you're not interested in it's like having sandpaper in your brain. It's just, yeah. You know, a majority of the time, you want to be able to do the thing that you're tasked with doing. You know, the, the want is there, but the desire is not and the interest isn't. And so it makes it incredibly difficult. And it's, it's almost completely in your subconscious. Like there's just something that's preventing you from executing. Yeah. Any thoughts on your report cards may not be the sum of who you are? Yeah, I, I wish someone had told me that a lot earlier in life. I so, wish. Sorry. <laughs> I, I'm, just, I'm just discovering it now. <laughs> it's all coming. It's all coming together. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I guess it all comes down to you have to allow yourself room to explore your creative side if you know that that's where your brain leans. Yeah. And, uh, and if you have a kid that is also that way, that has trouble focusing, um, you know, it may just be that they, they need a creative outlet or, you know, pay attention to what they're interested in because, you know, oftentimes they'll, they'll be more than capable of exceeding and succeeding in that interest hopefully this was helpful not a not a normal vlog but just um you know i talked to so many actors and they they feel, i can just see they feel guilty about who they are and the fact they're, they're creative and how their peers and their family just don't get it a lot of times and um you got one life to live yep. and uh um at least at least when you're young try everything and um You'll probably find something that works for you.